everyone, this is Patrick McCauley with Bose & Cox Limited Brokerage and the Patrick McCauley Group, and this is Explorer PTBO. And today I have my good friend Martha Sullivan from Sullivan Law. Thanks for coming over. Thanks, Pat. It's good to be here because I know you and I talk a lot. Yep. And we've talked about what's going on in the market, and I think it's because we really love what we do and we really enjoy working with our clients. But yeah. I think it's interesting for people who don't do real estate all the time to see it from our perspective. And I think it is really different when we get to be involved with real estate transactions every day and every week yeah. than if it's their one purchase of a lifetime yeah. or if it's their second purchase because they finally had yeah. twins. Like it's yeah, just right. different. Yeah. So lots of things have changed for us in the last 12 months. A lot has changed and I know we talk about it all the time. I know I think about it all the time and the market is constantly changing, but the past 12 months have been so dramatic that I think we all look back and say, what's going on? Yeah. And that, that period of a year ago when there was all the multiple offers and there was no conditions, it was really fast paced, but I think it also came with its drawbacks because you and I both know that sometimes bank appraisals didn't come through for what they were supposed to come mm -hmm. through for. And sometimes people couldn't close because they didn't have that financing. Yeah. And I think a lot now, Pat, for me and how I look at it is we've gone to a wiser market for everyone where we can slow down and really think things through and put in conditions that are better for everyone. Yeah, and I didn't want to be alarm everyone. exactly and yeah. I didn't want to be alarmist because so many deals do go smoothly, but especially in that frantic market, not all of them did. Yeah. And I guess now it gives you the opportunity to, you know, what what's your thoughts on hey, selling your house or not selling your house first, putting in an offer on another place and getting caught maybe with potentially two houses. So Pat, what I will say and what the law society wants me to say is this isn't legal advice because I'm not supposed to give that. These are our <laughs> thoughts as friends. Yeah. And if you want that advice, come on down. Yeah. But what I'm always going to say is, and what I will say that I'm doing personally, we've outgrown our building. I want bigger space. Right. But you got to do the really unexciting work first, which is the organization. Mm -hmm. Because when people and people have got caught owning multiple properties. So you put in that offer because you love the house, but then you can't sell your own. And it happens very rarely, but it is every type of stressful when people get caught yeah. owning two houses that they didn't want to own two houses. Yeah. Or maybe can't afford to own. Well, most of us can't. <laughs> Most of us can't afford to own two houses. Yeah. So I think putting some of those safeguards in place proactively so people have that smooth experience, that that's what we want for them. And I think some of those conditions being put in place, they're not the fancy ones. Yeah. They're the ones, like I know realtors use them all the time. We all suggest using them. Yeah. But I think they are a lot of the basics. Like let's think about the financing condition, making yeah. sure you're pre-approved. But now it's the rates have changed. Do you need to get reapproved way more regularly yeah. so that your buying power actually hasn't diminished? Right. I think another condition, we know the financing, mm -hmm. but I think making sure that your deals go firm in the right order so that just as you were saying, you're not caught in that position of owning multiple ones. Yeah. So they're both going firm together. And I know it's dull, but <laughs> doing that budget so that you know how much of the property tax is going to be, how much of the utility is going to be, yeah. all that kind of the normal stuff of owning a house, especially for first time home buyers, having that budget, I think is really big. And you have the tool on your website too, don't you? Yeah. So I think the tool on our website is really good to calculate all of your closing costs. Yeah. And I know it does help a lot of buyers because it's hard to keep it all in your head. And that's really good to work out your closing costs, the land transfer tax, um, just a couple of other conditions, um, making sure that your appraisal is in there right. and also an inspection yeah. because in this market you have the, you have the yeah, option to do it. Let's be wise. It Let's is do nice it. to be able to protect people with those yeah. again. And I think as a seller, just the only ones I would think about is sh making sure that the buyer's deposit maybe reflects their intentions. Um, making sure that you capture all the rentals so that you don't end up paying for them anymore. Yeah. And one that I see more and more as we become more environmentally friendly is making sure those solar panels actually transition appropriately. Okay. And it can just take more time 
than one might expect to actually get them transitioned to the new owner. So doing right. some extra legwork there in advance, I think does make a difference. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, that's why I like having you in. You, 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 <laughs> you're really good at talking so that we all understand and, and make us feel calm and, and that this process isn't supposed to be scary. But, and, Pat, I think that's what it should be yeah. because the reality is I do this all the time and I love it. <laughs> like, this is my wheelhouse. Yeah. And I think when you do it enough, you want to share that so it makes other people's experiences right. better. Thanks a lot, Martha. Thanks, You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you later.